press the bell icon on the YouTube app and never miss another update. bring with it unprecedented levels of disruption. And the most major beneficiaries, according to some, are likely to be the telecom service providers themselves. But how are they going to cope with the influx of network traffic? A critical question. So to give us a broad overview of the state of the Indian telecom industry and how it's paving the path for 5G, I'd like to please invite on stage the CEO of Bharti Airtel, Gopal Vittal. Please, a huge round of applause in welcoming him. A very good morning to all of you. Um, let me tell you a small story. Five years ago, I was in a room with um, um, a bunch of our partners, uh, global partners who provide us equipment, and they came in one by one and talked about um, how 4G would evolve. And there were projections of 4G, uh, which were five-year-old projections. So this was back in 2015. And uh, most of them, I think there was a consensus that by uh, the, the projections were that by 2020, uh, we would get to about 20% penetration of 4G in the country. Here we are, uh, three years in. Uh, the penetration is close to 27%. We've beaten this by over two years, and the penetration is growing. So the one conclusion that I would say is that, you know, when it comes to technology, nobody really has a clue as to how fast it evolves. Let me also look at what's happened in these last three years. If you look at what's happened in the last three years in the industry, we've seen on our networks a 15-fold increase uh, in data payloads and data throughputs. We've seen massive investments in the industry billions of dollars over the last few years. We've seen consumption go from 1 GB per month to 9 GB per month. It's been a staggering change in a very, very compressed period of time. Today, standing here, I would hazard a guess that if you look out five years out, and I'd be happy to be proven wrong, I probably will be wrong, but five years out, I think we're likely to see close to a billion smartphones. We're class likely to see more than a billion IoT connections, which uh, TK talked about. And in some ways, beginning to see how India will change in unimaginable ways. And I think the game changer for this will definitely be 5G. Now, why is it that it will be a game changer? I think, firstly, you're going to see massive capacities. 5G is a technology that will have really dramatically low latencies. You will be able to slice and dice networks and deliver quality of service for different customers and different cohorts. And it will truly be the next wave of digitalization. Yet, when you look at the industry in its aggregate today, because we will play, as a telecom industry, we'll play a very important role in laying out the infrastructure for 5G. When you look at the industry today, I think there are two things that are concerning. One is the overall financial health of the industry. The aggregate return on capital employed to the industry is under a percent. And secondly, when you look at 5G, the use cases out there are still hazy. I mean, I've attended several meetings on 5G, and the two use cases that are most talked about, and one of which uh, TK alluded to, is driverless cars and robotic surgery. Beyond that, people are trying to struggle as to what 5G will actually do. So what do we need to make 5G happen? I think I would like to call out two very strategic uh, issues that we need to address. One is a really visionary public-private partnership, a really visionary partnership between industry and the government. And I'll talk about that in a moment. And the second is what, again, TK alluded to, which is to create an innovation ecosystem which is cross-industry, because no one industry can do this. 5G is going to impact several industries at the same time. And I think this is the opportunity for us using the forum of the 5G Congress by ET to actually kick off both those things. So let me start with the first, which is the 
strategic partnership between government and industry. And I think there are three, uh, there are three areas that I would sort of pick out. One is on the spectrum side. On spectrum, um, we, India is talking about moving to 3.5 gigahertz. Um, there's also some movement on the 26 to 28 gigahertz bands, which are there in the US. At some stage, they may come into India. I think 5G will need massive amounts of spectrum at really low costs. To me, I think that is something that we have to get right if we really need to get the future of India right. I mean, take, for example, 3.5 gigahertz. 3.5 gigahertz, about six months ago, there was a TRAI paper that came out which talked about the reserve price of 3.5 megahertz. Ten times, it's ten times the price of markets like Spain and Korea. Korea is way ahead of India in terms of digital development, but even China which is a very large market. We have to get the pricing of spectrum right, and we have to make it available in large contiguous blocks. We have to make 100 megahertz available to each operator. Today, we are in a fortunate situation in India where we really have three large private operators and one public uh, and, and one government operator. This is a fantastic industry structure. For 1.3 billion customers to serve, with billions of devices to be connected, this is a glorious industry structure. But we need to get the pricing right, because the investment must go in actually rolling out the technology and rolling out the infrastructure. So I think the spectrum part is the first, uh, first thing. The second, related again to access, is on sites. You will need massive densification of sites. I think this is a time for the government to almost mandate sharing of sites. We don't want, I mean, you know, when I, when I look back 20 years ago, I wasn't in the industry. And I remember thinking to myself, why is it that these sites that are sometimes quite a sore site and quite an ugly site in our cities, why are they not consolidated and actually handled uh, together across the industry? Indus and Infratel came in, drove that sharing. We need to drive the sharing to the next level. And while doing so, we need to dispel these myths of radiation and so on and so forth, because 5G will need a massive densification of sites. The second area that I would talk about, and this is the access side, the second area is on the backhaul side. 5G will need massive fiber. At a site level, you're going to have 3 to 4 Gbps of speed just on the 3.5 gigahertz band. If you get to 26 to 28 gigahertz, you're going to require 10 Gbps speeds. No microwave will be able to deal with this. You need fiber. And I would say, using this forum, we must have a mandated policy to share fiber. Fiber must be declared a national asset. It's no different from roads. It must, I mean, almost if, the, if, if together, across with the government and the industry, we can lay ducts and roll fiber to every home and make it non-inclusive and open it up to the entire industry and make sure that the fiber that every company has is put into a pot so that it is shared by everybody else, I think it benefits India. We don't want to dig the same street again. We don't want a lousy environment where our roads are constantly dug up. We need to do this once, and we need to do it right. We need to stop wasting money in doing it ourselves. We need to do it collectively, because 5G will require massive fiber. The second part on backhaul is on microwave. We've been talking about E-band, V-band. Um, we've been talking about additional microwave contiguous spots in contiguous spots in order to actually use microwave to deliver one Gbps speeds at the base stations. All of this have been stuck for one reason or the other for several months. And I think this is a time for us to show some bold and visionary partnership between the regulator, the government, and the industry to make all of this available so that we can get our backhaul infrastructure right. I think the industry, on behalf of the industry, I will say that we're all desperate to provide a fantastic experience to customers. If we can get this right, I think we've set the path to roll out of 5G. So that's the uh, first part of the partnership between government and, and us. The second side is really the use cases. And this is where we need to create an innovation ecosystem. We need to almost use a movement to actually bring several industries together to innovate around what we can do on 5G. It will require entrepreneurship. It will require seed capital. It will require experiments across different partners and different domains. What are we doing at Airtel? Just to quickly touch on it. Uh, 
we have, we have done several trials. We've done trials on massive MIMOs. We've done trials on carrier aggregation. These are all the advent towards 5G. They're sort of 4.5G. We've done trials in our lab on 3.5 gigahertz. We've shown 3 Gbps speeds. We're working with 3 Gbp standards to change band 40 to 5G, which is on the 2300 megahertz band. We're looking at experimenting with data centers at the edge in order to drive compute on 5G. We've set up an X Labs, a digital lab in Bangalore to actually work on IoT. And most importantly, many of our base stations that have been ordered now are more or less 5G ready. These are things that we can do, but by doing this ourselves, it's not going to be adequate. So what I would like to conclude is that I think this is a game-changing technology. It will change the world in unimaginable ways. But to make this happen, I think we need to come together. This is the time to set aside our differences, to really look at bold leadership across both the industry and the government on spectrum, on sites, on fiber, and second part, is really to get the entrepreneurship and the innovation going in order to make 5G truly happen. Thank you very much. Telecom News Key Report. For the latest telecom news, subscribe to this channel now.